the most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Louis Michelson at Business Talk Radio, and we have a wonderful guest speaker today from Tucson, Arizona, and San Francisco Bay Area in California, Robin M. DeGroote. She's the owner and founder of TLC, Truth, Love, and Creativity. How you doing, Robin? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, are you kidding me? It's more wonderful having you on than us having you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so I see you focus a lot of your work on your creative exp- expression. Why do you think that this is so important for people to do? Well, I do believe that we're here to live a higher purpose and the um, main ways to access like higher frequencies in our own lives and just what we give off kind of and attract. Just tap into intuition, ideas, innovation, and you embark on projects, then we feel more accomplished. And when feeling more accomplished, then it creates this spiral of like success get success and you feel like you're actually progressing and you have a sense of growth. So I believe this is really in our human nature is to to create things, invent things, problem solve and when things are kind of like bottled up, we don't really let it out. That's where the expression part comes in. Then we start to or imploding to some degree, and things have to come out because it was never meant that we were just keeping everything inside. I think when that happens, it becomes what stress is really all about. Stress is kind of like the, the worry if you're not doing anything about it. So I, I basically uh, get people to think of the things in the way they're the most creative and then make sure that they're trying to get that out, especially like writing or somehow singing or speaking or something that it's really outside of your internal self. Go ahead. Yeah. So what, what are some of the examples of creativity in our daily life? Well, uh, I think this is really apparent right now because we're all inside, we're not necessarily working, working. Um, Some people are working online, but there's a lot of um, people listening to music, watching videos, movies, television, and playing video games. (laughs) So some of these things are, they're definitely based in a creative uh, element, and there's a whole bunch of people who are involved in that process of making a movie, for example, and all of those people are quite creative, from the writers to the producers, directors, the costume designers, all those type of things. So just video and movies in general and television, that's a huge area, which I think we see in modern day a lot. And then music, I just think it's so taken for granted on some level, because it's so easy to access now, and it's anywhere we want it, but that's also a huge part of our lives, and I think we would be feeling very, it would just be so much more glum and gray if we didn't have music. And then there's books and writing of all kinds, including screenplays and all of that stuff. And then even in the athletics and sports arena, I think we see um, there's, it's not necessarily looking like it's creativity, but it actually is a response type of, all the games are response type of games. So you're, you know the game and then you don't know what's going to happen. So you have to give it your all and really use your physical body, but also you're using your mental capabilities and all of the 
in, in the moment, kind of like an uh, instinctive reaction when someone's got the ball and all those type of things. So that, that's a whole other area where right now we can't do it that much. We can't watch sports games and all that because they are gatherings. But I guess online there's some kind of fantasy element, which is kind of funny. But it still it creates the same uh, scenarios. We like to watch and see what the response is. And then I know of many programmers. Um, they're the ones building the video games. So that also may seem like a very left brain activity and there's a lot of code being written and things like that. But I do think there's an art to that as well. And the, the picture in the longer run of that game has to be like you have to know the projection where you're going with that. So there, there is a, there is a creative element in all of that as well. It's also a team that has to build it. So there will be artists, there will be developers that make everything move and all those type of things. And then visual art always is around us in many ways. Um, I'm actually a visual artist, so I have a long history where I was a painter and drawing even before that. So drawing is always my base, and I do like to draw um, the figure and the charcoal and those type of things. But paintings, I like oil and dabbling a little bit with watercolor. And I think you see visual art in other ways, too, like in clothing, fashion design, architecture, interior decoration. All of the stuff still has a creative element, design element, and someone has to think of something to have a good sense of their design, and then they come up with things. And you try things, some things don't really work, but there's this part where you fail, you try again, and try all these different things. And I think that's what brings up all these possibilities within a person, which is kind of like your infinite possibilities. That's what I really like, because when you talk about the planning, there's a certain amount of planning someone can do in any project, then when something kind of pops into your mind, then I feel like this is maybe a universal inspiration, and that's where you start to come up with things that you could never have thought of, and it's just like these things come from out of nowhere almost, and it's deep within the person, and they've reached in and brought it out. So I really love it when that happens. Absolutely. And I want to get back to the music thing that you were talking about. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you heard it or listened to it, but on, uh, I think it was Monday night they had, or maybe it was Sunday night, they had a um, concert in your living room. Oh, yeah. And it was Elton okay. John, yep, mm -hmm. and he hosted it. And what they were doing was they were going to people's houses. Not going, they were already there. And set up, right, right. set up, uh, you know, famous people singing a song. Um, they had Tim McGraw singing on his diving board at his pool. They had uh, the, the Backstreet Boys, all five of them, all, all each each guy singing separately, but all together on the, on the screen. Oh, that's amazing! Uh, it was amazing, and uh, <laughs> it, it, and uh, um, I, think I, I did see Eddie Vedder from uh, Soundgarden. Maybe it was the same concert. I think I did see a part of it. Yeah, probably. It's great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, and that was that's a wonderful thing. That's bringing the because there's no there's nothing, except for watching uh, old sports on TV. <laughs> you know, from yeah. 1996 or uh, you know 2002, um, the championships. They had uh, the best NFL games uh, ever played. The other day, they had the best college games ever played, um, and it's what they got to do because there's nothing out there now. You can't you can't go to the Coliseum, you can't go to the to the stadium. Yeah, high school. I, you know, I feel bad for all those kids, the seniors. 
Oh, and, yeah. And the Olympians. Oh, my God. they got to wait a whole nother year. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, you train for four years as hard as you can to be an Olympian. And then it get canceled and you got to wait another year. But this is all part of what's going on. I mean, the whole world has come to a complete stop. That's right. And I, I am kind of amazed that the, um, like, it's, it's a creative idea to bring all these things to your living room. And I'm really happy that a lot of the shows are doing that, the late show, things like that. So that's kind of fun. And they're trying to interview experts and make sure that you hear some of the right information, but then also making humor with it. So I really like all of that. Laughter is the I'm best just, medicine. Yeah, and I'm just really happy that, first of all, we are actually poised in a way to keep the communication, even though we can't actually physically be with each other. So that kind of an amazing thing that we're at at this point. And then the sudden need to use all of this online uh, media is it seems drastic, but I think we've been ready to use it a lot more, actually. So I think there will be a lot more telecommuting from now on because it does save a lot for companies and people don't have to drive to work. So I think there will be some more days from home in the future in general for a lot of companies who can do that. So I think it's maybe going to bring up some good um, patterns that will help with kind of keeping the environment better because right now the environment is having some kind of reprieve and there is some healing of Mother Earth and that's very interesting as a side note. <laughs> I think you're 100% right. I think that the world is going to change because yep. the grind, the grind that everybody's in has come to a stop. You know, the... Getting up in the morning at uh, 5.30, running downstairs, taking a shower, getting dressed, making breakfast yeah. for the kids, getting them off to school, going to work, driving in traffic, sitting in traffic. I don't care what state you're in. At the, when everybody's right. going to work, everybody's going to work. That's right. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it unless you're rich enough to have a helicopter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think that things are going to change. Uh, people are going to realize that they're getting to uh, reconnect with their kids. Um, instead of two ships passing in the night, you know, um, dad comes in, he's tired, he throws his briefcase down, he sits in a chair, tries to turn the news on, and uh, the kids say, come on, dad, let's go throw the ball. Oh, I'm a little pooped, son. Uh, <laughs> you know, now it's going to be, yeah, middle of the day, let's go outside and have a catch, you know, because uh, I just did my whole job. So uh, okay. if, if the corporate, if the corporations can handle it and it's better for everybody... What the heck? Let the world change. Yeah. Let the world change. It'll be for the better. Yeah. I know quite a few people who already had, like, Wednesdays or something, where that was the work-from-home day. Yes. But then not everyone took advantage of it because they don't always work that well at home. But now it's kind of like you have to learn how to work well at home as well. And then you keep the work-life balance because... You're always in the same space, so you have to create boundaries, and sometimes that's good for children. Sometimes it's not great because some of the kids don't really understand it, but um, it, it, is, it can be done, and it can be done in a good way if you have your office or something and it's like, this is the time I do this, and then I will play and things like that. So it's yeah, very uh, interesting. I was talking to a psychologist uh, on the last show, and uh, we talked about the people that work from home. Um, if, they're, if they're good workers, they do more work at home because they feel guilty about going into the kitchen and making themselves a cup of coffee or tea because <laughs> they're taking away from work. But meanwhile, if they were in the office, they'd be in the kitchen BSing with somebody else for 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny to figure out our nature when uh, when we're in these different environments. That reminds me of the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, it's a very interesting book because it teaches you, well, the goal is to 
basically be working from anywhere, not just home. Maybe you could be traveling. But part of the beginning of that book is he says to start saying, hey, I would like to do like a day or two from home. And then you show that you're so much more productive from home that they start to li- like it <laughs> because there is a lot of wasted time at the office. So it is um, interesting. And you want to prove book. yourself. Yeah, yeah. And that's by Timothy Ferris. It's a great book because he talks about the, all the other freedom you can do with your time if you know how to really do the work remotely and distill it into efficiency, then that's pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's hold that thought. Let's go to a commercial, and we'll be right back. This is Louis Michelson from Business Talk Radio, and we're talking to a creativity expert, Robin DeGroote. Don't leave us. We will be right back. The next step to following your dreams is closer than you think. KDMA and the Actors Studio is an established, reputable talent management and services agency based on the East Coast. Actors, models, singers, voiceover artists, and live entertainers trust their careers with KDMA. Not only does KDMA advise and market talent, they provide talent with the necessary tools to be successful in today's demanding entertainment industry, offering in-house classes, coaching, photo and video services, reel and audio production, showcases, seminars, and more. KDMA makes talent development and advancement simple and affordable. For more information about talent representation and services at KDMA and the Actors Studio, visit KDMA and the Actors Studio.com. That's KDMA and the Actors Studio.com. Let KDMA take your career to the next level. Do you want better health with natural solutions that work? East Wind Acupuncture, a 20 year traditional Chinese medicine clinic in Chesterton, Indiana, does just that. Offering acupuncture, herbs, massage therapy, and nutritional support, East Wind has helped thousands of people eliminate symptoms and regain health. They offer a comprehensive health review, Chinese medical exam including tongue and pulse diagnosis, and customized treatments designed for optimum results. They also offer educational programs, lifestyle classes, and workshops. For more information or to schedule your free health consultation, visit the website ewacupuncture.com or call 219-395-9928. East Wind Acupuncture, restoring health naturally. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back, everybody, and good afternoon. This is Louis Michelson at Business Talk Radio, and we have a creativity expert, Robin DeGroote. How are we doing, Robin? I'm doing good. Excellent. So we're all about the creativity of what's going on out there and how we can use it. Yep. What do you think some people that are trying to survive, what do you think that they can do out there with creativity? Well, um, I always like to say there are ways you can uh, activate your creativity gene, kind of. So good to figure out what works for you because it can be really different for many people. So it's Good to try a few different things. Um, First of all, this has become a distraction, which is great in a time when everything seems a little bit tense and that's very stressful. So when you can do maybe a backyard um, workout, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger was showing some of those, (laughs) but basically going outside is one of the first things to always try. Because connecting with nature really has a similar frequency that humans have. So there's just this natural bringing up of your own uh, relaxation with your autonomic nervous system. And then 
um, when you move your body, you really start to activate energy as well. Breathing, that's always great in something consciously like doing yoga or qigong or tai chi. That's when you kind of slow down, you really focus on the breath. So those things are great. But when you're doing any kind of exercise, I always talk about my dancing and my mini trampoline or big trampoline because then you will automatically be doing a lot of breath work. So that's really great for keeping your lungs strong as well. And then I think uh, trying to emulate some of the entertainment that we're watching. So like I was saying, in the back behind a lot of the TV and um, music and everything, there's writing. So writing is always a huge element that I believe everyone should do because everyone that has uh, their own thoughts, if they actually put them out on paper, you start to make those thoughts flow and you kind of inspire thought to thought to thought. So trying to write and making, even journals is always a good start because like writing what you're doing and kind of recording how you're feeling in this time, I think it'll be actually a really nice memento later on because it's very significant and it really won't happen again, probably, for a long time. So that could be something where you saw, wow, this was the change overnight and maybe I was home with my kids and all of these things, the things that were good, things that are challenging good to record that and just start to, maybe you'll start to write some poems or something like that, or write a story for your kids, things like that. I think that's always the easiest way, but then I do believe um, also in drawing and doodling, sketching, just like trying to draw something you see, like a still life type of thing. And that actually trains your brain on the, on the right side of the brain. So that's something that helps to balance your brain. And balancing the brain is kind of the beginning of everything for your body being balanced. And my mother used to have this book called um, Why Conductors Live Into Their 90s. <laughs> because it was, a, it was part of the one brain uh, workshop kind of thing she was a part of. And the conductors have their arms, like, at their shoulder level up right, and then they're always spinning them around, kind of. So there's this, there's this uh, motion that k- balances the two hemispheres of the brain, but it's also raising the um, breath capacity because it's opening up the lungs. So some of these exercises can be done just in your own way, a little thing where you lift your arms and you're... You're making, like, letter C with each arm at your elbows, and that can help just get some energy moving. But I do think if people take pencil to paper, pen and paper, that's going to be really good. Keep up the listening to all things like music and even audible stories. Allow yourself to daydream. Because I think if the daydream can hap- daydreaming can happen... It's actually going to inspire imagination, which you probably haven't had time to do for a while. Like, before this, when we're working, 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 we're making money, but we're not necessarily creating something of our own, especially if a lot of people are employees. And even as a CEO, and if you founded your company, you did the creation before, but now you have to implement. So then it becomes sort of like work, work, work. And when people are seeking all these entertainment things, it's, it's usually like these are two separate things, but I think if we can integrate more of the, um, the imaginative parts of our day throughout the day, then I think that's going to help later as well. And right now people can learn a new skill, basically. So I think when you have some time... It's good to exercise your brain in that way. It's just different than it has been for a while. I know Udemy has a lot of courses, and those are video, but there's a lot of things just reading 
and reading, I always think, is inspirational, and it can allow the imagination. I have some books on creativity itself and art, which I've been going back to, and some of them I've had for 20 years, and some I have more recently. So a few of those I wanted to mention. Um, I have the book, I mentioned the book by Julia Cameron, The Artist's Way, that was last week. And then I also have the uh, Freeing the Creative Spirit by Adriana Diaz, Art Matters by Neil Gaiman, and Art as Therapy by Alan de Botton and John Armstrong. So those are awesome books. Um, and I also wanted to make a correction from a couple of weeks ago, I think. I said one of the numerology books I was learning from, I said uh, Michelle Calloway, but it's actually Michelle Buchanan. And that was a follow-up to the numerology book where I learned about your life path from um, the Dan Millman. So Dan Millman also did the way of the spirit of the the way of the warrior. I'm not sure if it's a spiritual warrior. I have to read that again. But I do think if you could read a book right now, <laughs> I just think it's really. First of all, it's good for us to read, and it is inspirational, and just like something to come out of this time being uh, being uplifting and progressing our growth, I think that will be an amazing thing. And not only entertainment, that's why I think entertainment's in there, but we should also become a little more producers of some of this. Uh, instead of only the consumers. <laughs> Everybody's got some creativity in them. They just got to learn how to get it out, and Robin DeGroot can get it out for you. Tell everybody yeah. how to get in touch with you. Very important. Yes. Uh, my website is a good place to start. It is robinmdegroot.com, and on there I have all my channels. I have things going on on YouTube, podcasts, and I have a bit of a blog, not too much, but um, you can see some services. Actually, right now I'm doing a very, very uh, easy service. I'm making a, an appointment for online coaching that is a pay what you can. And I was actually inspired by a Tucson restaurant doing that. And I just think it, for now, I think that's a really fun way to get people to try something that they've not done before. So something with the online coaching could be great, and it's just like a donation type of thing, and we'll go from there. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. It's always great talking to you, Robin. Thank All righty. This is Louis Michelson at Business Talk Radio. Everybody, please be safe out there. If you have anything that you want to help your creativity come to a full bloom, contact Robin DeGroot. This is Business Talk Radio. Don't forget to wash your hands. Be safe out there. And we will talk soon. Don't leave us. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C. Take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. It's now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D. Help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. 
thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. 